so chalo let's start today we will be going to discuss about data science which is a fundamental field before you start machine learning i hope you attended yesterday's session uh, in which rajan gave some insights about machine learning today we will see data science so let's start uh, just a small promotion before starting this session uh, as you all know we have seven members in our opoc community uh everyone one of the member is going to take some sessions uh, in this seven days uh, where we already had a ml and ai session yesterday by strajan today today i and somesh are going to some uh, going to talk about data science which is a very interesting and intriguing field if you want to pursue it <laughs> so first of all hiding within those mounds of data is the knowledge that could change the world there is so much data overall in the world that if you properly extract all those data then you will find so many insights which will help you in making business decisions so uh, data science is very important field uh, such that you can make proper business decisions and then you, as a company you can grow and do not make some mistakes and uh, if you analyze your data properly suppose you will have a customer consumer base then you know what the consumer want from your store or something then it is a uh, very beneficial suppose netflix netflix has a recommender system so netflix will recommend you only those movies which you are watching uh, which you are watching continuously so uh, what is data science it is a, it is a study of large quantities of data you have uh, so many large quantities of data which the real world data is often messy uh, data science deals with cleaning and pre processing all those data to make some meaningful decisions then you reveal insights insights means just uh, sub what is general trend pattern that you can identify from your data suppose the stock market data if i give you one year uh, stock market data of a uh, of a company then you can make a prediction model which can predict the next price according to certain accuracy it also help organize organizations to make strategic choices now data scientists and all they they are present in a company that they help different organizations to make strategic choices suppose if i am starting to launch a product then which all uh, users should i target what should i do to make the sales more and so on different insights you can get from your data moving on what are some key features of a data scientist a data scientist should be a good storyteller that means given a large amount of data he should be able to completely uh, visualize and tell what all further predictions we can make out of it new data scientist needs to be curious judgmental and argumentative which is self explanatory and should be good in basic mathematics because you will be dealing with mathematics and statistics throughout your journey if you want to be a data scientist moving on uh, there are three different terms that you might want to know before hopping into the field of data science there is a data engineer data analyst and data scientist there are three major job positions if you want to apply for data science related profiles first of all is a data engineer now what data engineer does is it does data modeling and warehousing that means collecting of all those data from different sources as you know the data is scattered and not at a one place so data engineers what they do is they collect all those data and store it into a big warehouse some of the tools and technology they use is big data hadoop kafka and spark and similarly you can see all those etl tools and so on now what a data analyst does is a data analyst just analyzes whatever the clean data is given to him now data engineer through many processes provides data to data analysts now a uh, data analyst mostly work in excel and have to be expert in excel uh, excel is mostly used now also in industries uh, to visualize some sort of data now there are many advanced features in excel such as v lookup and pivot tables so data analyst need to master all of these they should have also a good understanding in sql statistics python 
SQL is structured query language that is generally used to qu query a large data set. Statistics is very important, which is uh, which includes mathematics it, in itself. And they should have basic Python knowledge because everything in data science run on top of Python. So if you are learning Python, then you are doing a good job. Now there are some enterprise BI tools such as Tableau and Power BI. So now Tableau is an independent company and Power BI is owned by Microsoft. There are two uh, business intelligence, uh, BI stands for business intelligence tool, which help you make some efficient uh, predictions given some amount of data of your users. And they should have the domain knowledge. Suppose, uh, what do you mean by domain knowledge is, suppose you are a company that deals with housing prices and uh, you are, your job is to predict the price of a house given that it has two BHK flat, it has some surroundings, it has a swimming pool, the house has and so many things. So the person should be expert in domain knowledge that what will be the changes in price if some certain features such as in this case swimming pool and all are added to a house. These are the jobs of data analyst and last is data scientist which is very very advanced and very, very high paying than both of them. Data scientists should have very in-depth and uh, very in-depth understanding of statistics, Python and SQL, which is uh, also for all these uh, data analysts. Now what extra they need to learn is they also need to learn machine learning prediction models. They need to have good understanding of Jupyter Notebook, Spark and Tableau. Spark we saw here, it is also for data engineer. Now some tools might be common for both of them, but uh, it depends upon how much uh, degree you master that tool. Data scientists should be good in data cleaning, data cleaning and exploration, uh, which we call as exploratory data analysis. And also they should be able to build complex machine learning models, deep learning, NLP, sklearn and TensorFlow and uh, machine learning and AI we talked about in yesterday's session. Talk, talking of uh, what all the things mm, they follow, uh, here you can see there is software developers, that is they create websites or app. So what they, what they do is whatever software or app they create, some users use all those apps and then they suppose they submit some data, they enter your email and their phone number and so on. So there are some systems that can track all those things and then they can generate insights regarding them. Data engineer extracts all those data, which is uh, extract, transform and load ETL process into a big data warehouse, such as uh, BigQuery is also one of our data warehouse and they store all the big data in a organized manner. Now data analyst, what it does is takes all those data, uh, which the data engineer has stored. And then they do analysis on SQL uh, or Tableau, Excel and Python. Now data scientist, what they does is, uh, uh, here data analyst does not deal with creating some complex machine learning models, but they are just used for visualizing all the data that we provide. Data scientists are more on the, mm, what do you say, machine learning creation models and deep learning advanced techniques. One small example and analogy I would like to give is data engineer is the one who prepares all the ingredients for the main product to be uh, main product to be formed. Suppose if you want to make pizza, you have to have so many different ingredients. Now data engineer will bring all those ingredients to the data scientist and data analyst. Now data scientist and analyst need to know how to use all this data into converting meaningful products, which in this case is pizza. Adesh, please, back, back, please. Yeah, I just want to create a poll. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so whom do you think gets the maximum salary out of these on the basis of factors you just saw? Data engineer, data analyst, data scientist. Yeah, and or do you think all are losers? Is poll visible from my screen? Uh, actually, uh, they will see the poll screen only. Your screen will not be visible right now. Okay.
Yes, we have 32 votes and 51 par participants. Others, please vote first. Okay. okay. At least it is good to know that you don't think data scientists or data analysts all are losers. We have 40 votes till now. And just the next slide will give you the answer that who earns the maximum. And I will also tell you one more very important site which will be used throughout your career. If you want to know what salary a particular position, what salary a particular person gets at a company position. Okay, so I've closed the poll. Uh, others, you can continue and give your insights on this. Uh -huh. So data engineer is six votes. Data analyst is eight votes. Data scientist I liked it is 30 votes because uh, data scientist does maximum of their job and and you're all of you have who have voted for data scientists are actually correct. So, um, so you can close the pool. No? Uh, nice. These are the general statistics. No, sorry, data. Uh, this is the general salary statistics for data analyst, engineer and scientist. You can see data analysts have generally lesser jobs in USA as compared to data engineer and data scientists. Now, uh, talking of complexity, the complexity of data engineers job is the toughest because he has to create data from all different sources. And then you have to clean data, which is very, very, very tedious task in data science. So he has around you can already see if you convert it into rupees, then you will know exact amount in India. The salary may be less because this is the, just the average salary. And we are not even talking about the maximum salary. Maximum salary can go very, very large. Now, uh, there is a site called as glassdoor.com where you can find all the job openings and people post their salary data online. After the session, after the session, you can also verify all this data, which might be changing every year because uh, due to many factors so uh, someone please put the link of glassdoor.com in the chat so now on somesh will talk about what are the basic prerequisites that you have to develop before delving into the field of science Guys, could anyone verify that my screen is visible or not? Yes, yes, it's visible. Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, what do you think the major languages used in this field of data science is, of course, Python. And the major reason uh, the Python is used in the field of data science is also as told by Sturgeon in the last session as it was a very easy language and the people have already worked in, in this language and created many modules that you could use uh, that you could use it directly to like, like do your uh, certain tasks. That's why Python is the most popular language in the field of data science. But there are other languages which are also famous in, the, in this field. And the other languages are firstly after the uh, Python, the next famous languages is the R programming languages. Then you have uh, these other languages, including MATLAB, Scala, MySQL, and Julia. All of the all uh, all the other these languages have their different purposes. But yeah, Python is still the best because you can do um, many many more things in the Python. But uh, these languages don't offer that much amount of flexibility to you. Now, what are the Python libraries that are def mostly used in this field? So you can consider uh, these are the four most uh, famous libraries, starting with the NumPy, Pandas, SciPy, and the Scikit-Learn. They these are used. This are this library is used for the for uh, doing the math mathematical part. This library is used for co collecting the data and analyzing the data. Then this is uh, used for mostly the machine, lear machine learning uh, models. So you can use the machine learning uh, models directly from these uh, libraries. 
Now, what is data visualization? So, data visualization is a field where you actually you are provided with the data. Now you have to like visualize the data. So, like in the form of bar charts, graphs, or your either your scatter plot, so that you can actually like find a you can find a pattern in, in those graphs, and then you can collect the most out of out of those uh, data. So, data visualization actually help you to analyze the data. So, consider that if you are provided with an Excel file or a CSV file that is comma separated file, then you would be dealing with all those data, 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 data. So, you can't predict anything with those values uh, present in those Excel files if you have viewed the any Excel file before. So. Data visualization actually hit in that process since it helps you to visualize that data in the form of the graphs or the other bar charts. Now, these are the common four libraries that are used in the uh, field of data visualization, starting with the Matplotlib, Matplotlib and Simon. They are the most famous libraries and, and they are used in the Python. And uh, they, are, they are providing you with the various features uh, you can use to visualize your data. And these are the other fam uh, some other famous libraries named as Plotline and Tableau, as told by the other before. So these are the fa famous libraries in the field of data visualization. Now, data science projects. Firstly, I would like to call others to present uh, one, one of his projects. Then I would uh, continue to present my projects and then continue with the slides. Others, thank you. Just a second. So uh, this is my GitHub repository. I have made some basic projects on data science. So first project is this is a web app for Iris prediction data set. Now there is a thing a thing called as Iris data set, which I will show you now. Hmm. This simple Iris flower prediction app. Now what you have to do is there is a iris flower and it has three different species one is versicolored one is setosa and one is virginica all of them actually differ in four categories one is sepal width sepal length petal width and petal length now uh, there are different values of all these three and if you click here it is uh, you can you can see the csv data like if you have this value of sepal length this value of sepal width this petal length and this petal width then the species will be setosa and similarly we have many different uh, different ob observations for the data now what you can do is there is a slider here you can tweak different values and choose the input parameters suppose uh, if i change here it is showing 5.4 suppose i tweak this now it is showing 6.35 and similarly you can see different values here now i can give this four input different values to my machine learning model and then it will predict which of the following is most likely the flower with these four parameters now i am defining class labels and their index number zero stands for setosa one for versicolored and two for virginica uh, i have given these four values which is sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width values now my prediction is showing that the predicted flower is setosa with 96% probability. Now what I can do is I can change those values. Suppose I changed it. See, now the prediction shows that the predicted flower is virginica with 99% probability. So this site automatically updates on its own and you can see uh, different values. I can change this percentages are changing every time. See, now this is predicting versicolored with 100% probability. Now, uh, I talked about EDA. EDA stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. If you take here, show EDA, it will just run it and it will show you all the different uh, EDA, which uh, different analysis of data. See, first of all, this is a plot made using Seaborn, which is called as a pair plot. Now, what pair plot does is it takes all the different values of sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width and on x axis and similarly on y axis suppose take uh, take this graph this has a particular x comma y value of sepal length and petal width it maps all the values of species setosa versicolor and virginica 
now uh, you can see most probably the setosha species has less sepal length and less petal width so all these points lie nearer to the origin and the virginica is very far away from the origin so using this we plotted all the different graphs i will show you one more thing so i have made a made a repository where i have stored all the different types of seaborne plots here if you will just search for pair plot someone please share the link as well of both streamlet and this github repository now you can create different pair plots and i have also written some code here this is of tips data set basically you are creating here the total build tip and size and creating different pair plots so i would recommend if you read seaborn then you will know much more about pair plots so this is the first part next second is we discuss what is the count of different flowers based on the species so here we have all the counts are 50 that means this is a completely balanced data set and therefore there is no particular bias regarding that i will predict setosa all the time so all three prediction probabilities are equal and this is the case of balanced data set now what is this this is just a histogram plot uh, what is histogram plot it counts all the frequencies of particular uh, this is this is a word which is which in data science is called as categorical variables i also have a file of uh, histogram plot here where i have made some different observations uh, suppose suppose this is a histogram plot which is counting some different values starting from 170 to 230 with a line which is called as kde line kernel density estimation line it just makes the best fit line of all the different uh, bar graphs that you make now moving on next we created a heat map that shows the correlation value between all the different categorical variables suppose this is petal width and this is petal length then this 0.96 shows that the petal width and petal length values are highly highly correlated that means if one of the values increases then the next value also increases so uh, it is fairly obvious if petal length would be large then petal width would also be large so this can also be used to make some trends regarding your data now this is a heat map you can also see my uh, i have created a uh, ipynb file of heat map here so this is a heat map you can draw heat map with various uh, means many different arguments you have to pass through it all of them the does some particular thing which you can read more about in seaborn documentation so someone put the link of seaborn documentation as well so these are different types of plot you can uh, get what are the correlation values among all the variables you can also style your graph based on different color different colors and all see how i have done it you can annotate your graph if you pass annotation equals to true which will show the relative uh, number of means this higher the number that means more this variable and this variable are correlated and similarly you are uh, you can also pass different numpy arrays and you can explore more things on your own then there are additional styling options such as color palettes and line widths so uh, please go to go through the code once if you get time now next we have is this is also a histogram plot but with kde line on now uh, you can see this is petal width and this is count on y axis we have separated three different species one is setosa one is versicolored and virginica you can see virginica petal width generally tends to be larger than both the values of versicolored and setosa uh moreover these graphs are normal distribution if you have much more uh, much more bigger data set this graph will tend towards normal distribution so upper one was petal width this is petal length this is sepal length this is sepal width and now next this is a violent plot violent plot is simply this kde line which is you can see this here that means on the tip of both the uh, kd lines that shows it has lesser count and higher the uh, value more toward the left side or more toward the right side that means larger values on those areas and we have four different plots so this is all the uh, exploratory data analysis for iris data set so this was one basic project 
and you can create many more projects here and one more thing for uh, i have also made some different analysis of data set variables i if i open this so this is actually hosted on versal versal uh, so now you use your knowledge of cloud computing and cloud hosting as well to host your data science projects uh, this is this is a variable of sepal length and you can see its distribution here sepal width petal length and petal width it is also showing showing that it has high correlation with two fields and there is the species count that means all different flowers have equal number of counts here then uh, here you can see different data uh, different interactions if, if i change here sepal length and petal length so it generally follows an increasing trend that means more the petal length more the sepal length then you have different correlation matrices matrices i will uh, say you read it up on your own there are four different types of correlation matrix spearman pearson kendall and fike and then we do uh, missing analysis uh, missing value data set analysis of count and matrix this is a perfectly clean data set so it has no missing values uh, we also create what the rows look like first rows and what are the last rows and uh, last but not the least we have the duplicate rows uh, which is one duplicate row here because some uh, data points can be uh, written again and again we can also toggle this through uh, the top header bar so this was one simple ideas data set project and we have created many more uh, but okay so Max, uh, based on what others said let's check your uh, attention through a poll yeah <clears throat> so which python library is used to plot data visualization graphs it has multiple answers it may have multiple answers so you may have heard the name while uh, others were speaking like through which library he plotted these graphs okay so 10 seconds more Guys, so much of so much was also mentioned that so you can think rewind back. <laughs> okay, so I will close the poll now. Yeah, other than so much, you can just tell the answers like. Ah, uh, so much. You go ahead and take it. Actually, the. Python library, which is famous to plot the data visualization graphs, is Matplotlib and Seaborn. And NumPy is a library which is used for the uh, mathematical calculations. And Desmos is just a website where you can plot the graphs on the basis of the function which you have given. Yeah, so I think you have you will be using Desmos to plot some uh, chemistry plots, like in this yeah, semester. Yeah. So. If you go to matplotlib and seaborn, you can uh, use the same functions like plotting those all those graphs using those points in a much better. Way. So please check that out. Yeah. So the project part is done, and I wish you can take ahead from here. Okay. So should I take the next part? Okay, I'm leaving that. Okay, I'm just covering the tackle. Tackle part. I'm just covering the tackle. So, okay, guys, I know that uh, even though Sturgeon told you about the Kaggle yesterday, I'm just giving you a, a brief overview of the Kaggle website today. So, Kaggle is a website which is actually having a lot of uh, contests, uh, its competitions, it is providing you with the major data sets. You can also uh, code on the Kaggle, uh, you can also code your data science projects on the Kaggle website. So, and you can also uh, take part in the various courses. So, if I could just uh, click on the courses part, you can actually like, 
take part, you want to learn, so you can actually visit on this website and you can uh, uh, you can learn many courses as you want, starting from the uh, Python intro to SQL, and then it also includes the courses such as machine learning. Then you can actually code your own notebook here. That is, you can code the data science project on this website. Then you are provided with the various data sets here. So, like consider an example. I want to make look after the Marvel Comics collections. So I would be just click on on this system. Then I guess this is some project. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, pe, yeah pe, they are providing us with the data also, like what data they have used starting from the CSV file. You can use these data for your projects so that if you want to analyze something, then we have other things. There are various competitions are being hosted on this uh, website. So you can take participate uh, in a competition and you can earn this amount of money uh, by just uh, solving this sort of problems and uh, Submitting your projects or sol solutions on this website, then you can access various things. Then you have discussion forums from where from where you can get the help, like if you're facing any problem. So there's a lot more here. You, I believe that you should try to discover the the site on your own. Uh, you will definitely find something extraordinary, or you will definitely learn something from this website. Now moving on to the next part. What is happening? Did you create? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So actually, when you are working on the data science, okay, when you are working on the data science, you have to take care of these five points. First, when you are working on any data science project, you have to understand the problem that you are getting. So. For that understanding the problem on which you have to create the project is uh, necessary. If you don't understand the problem, you cannot definitely create. You cannot create a project on it. After understanding the problem, you have to gather the relevant data that is necessary to that process, so that you can like you need to have data what all are needed to like to generate the insights uh, from uh, to generate the insights or. What all data are needed to uh, to facilitate the problem? Then you need to data preparation that and uh, EDA. So that involves the data cleaning, your data visualization part, and every other thing. Then then we have feature engineering and feature extraction. So you have to collect the necessary features out of those uh, data. So which you will be using in uh, for your analysis part, and then you have to build your model and deploy it uh, using any. Uh, Build or deploy a machine learning model using that data, so that could help your hypothesis to get a formal definition. So that means have a hypothesis, you train a model, and then you can use this model to predict your future predictions. Like uh, as Adil showed you a project on the flowers, uh, on the flower flowers, uh, differentiating in all the four different flowers. Now, considering a basic example that uh, you want to predict the house prices in your city so in this case your problem would be the predicting the house prices in your locality or your city then for gathering the relevant data you have to gather what like what is the area that is taken by the houses how many floors are present on the houses how many bathrooms are there how many bedrooms are there then you actually after getting those data you have to prepare those data so like you have to clean the data. Sometimes your data is not, you cannot use that particular data. You have to clean the data. And for cleaning the data is like, uh, sometimes they are missing values or some store, people don't want to share the data with you. So in that cases, you have to clean the data and make it usable so that it could be usable uh, in the future. Then you have to extract the certain features out of those data, which you would be using in your machine learning model. Because in machine learning model, you would be needing some features and using those features, you would be giving out the answers or the things. And then you need um, to create a machine learning model, which could help, uh, which you would be training using the data and that you would be uh, deploying this model into the, uh, for your uh, future predictions. Wait. 
there is a slide uh, uh, maybe you can just uh, close and open again it will show then yeah oh <laughs> i can <laughs> present it now so okay this is the first, i know that you have already been dealing with this stage firstly you would feel that the data science seems interesting then when you try to uh, be the part of learn try to learn the data science you will explore some things and you will feel that no it is okay still it is famous due to something but yeah i can handle that then you will understand the worst part of that data science field <laughs> that is just the thing i want to tell you that was just a joke was a try hard now we are on the fourth part <laughs> now covering on to the next part like what are the advantages and the disadvantages of the data science first advantages it's it is in demand and companies are hiring the data science professional at this time and they are offering a high amount of money at you to you and there are abundance of positions as told by others there are several roles that are present at the data science uh role. there are different data science roles so you have many different positions and lot of companies are hiring uh, with time because they all have accumulated the data now they want someone to make the analysis and uh, help the company to predict the future uh, to to what has to be done in future then it is a highly paid career um, it is currently paying a very high amount of money then it is highly prestigious and it is also versatile then it is covering on the next thing its disadvantages firstly data science is a blurry term because you are not able to differentiate like what is data science what is machine learning and what all this data science can actually cover here so you cannot cover everything in this data science and secondly mastering data science is near to impossible because no one has been currently able to master data science because you will always be facing with the new challenges as you go ahead then large amount of domain knowledge required as told by others that correct thing that if you are working in the medical sector or you are working in the finance sector then other than this data science knowledge you also need the knowledge in, inside those particular domains whether it is uh, medical finance or uh, whether it is any other thing you have need to have a large amount of domain uh, large amount of dom dom uh, domain knowledge then sometimes you may also get a false data which may accidentally lead to the unexpected results so there are various uh, examples which you have always seen in uh, while you are working on some uh, some or other things then the last problem is that for data science you need data from your customers okay that is good because you make, you need to make the analysis and other things but the problem is that it lead to the problem of data privacy because you are as a company you are taking the data of your uh, users which is the violation of the uh, data privacy so that is the most biggest disadvantage of the data science now i will be sharing with you some resources that you could refer while working on your uh, while learning the data science now starting with the most famous resource which uh, uh, the so everyone followed for this machine learning because uh, wait yeah for the data science part you can look after these various things starting with the data science specialization by job uh, john hopkins but it is a very good course providing you with the all, all the knowledge but it is a problem that they provide you with the expertise in the r r language but but currently companies are hiring more uh, professionals who are working in the python field then you have another uh, ibm data science professional certificate you can also enroll in this thing or for enrolling in this thing you could uh, you can uh, actually, um, actually use the financial aid method for applying in any course on the coursera then you have another coursera that is data analysis with python zero to pandas from jovian you can also visit this course currently these two courses are actually paid services so you can use financial aid to be a part of these courses 
but the, uh, this course is currently a free course so you can uh, visit this website and do whatever courses you like and they are providing with you the lessons and the assignments and the end they will be want you to work on a course project uh, this has been followed by the majority of these years so don't worry that I am not referring to any course which is not referred by anyone then this course is the most awesome course as Srijan has also told you machine learning is also currently used in this field of data science since you have to train the models and this is the best course you can uh, learn for on the machine learning that is machine learning by, by the Andrew NG this is the best course and it is recommended by all the students that have attended their course so I even I have also attended that course it is really awesome now there is one other free resource that could be accessible on the YouTube which is the free code camp free code camp is actually a company which is providing you the resources on, on free on various fields that you want to watch and their, their data science courses also very good so you can uh, visit this free code camp website to watch the data science lectures now yeah so with so with this we have come to an end of the session so hello uh, i guess that is the end of the session thank you for joining kal milte hai with the advanced version of dsa that is cp johnny ket dikhane aur dikhayega and the ket pro cp border hello friend ending the session thank you guys thank you so much everyone thank you so much